to see you. It's nice to see you. You're still gorgeous, aren't, aren't you? you? Wow. Well, what beautiful. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you look back at that and think, wow, that's fantastic? Because I was just saying, you were way ahead of your time, really, weren't you? That's my trouble. <laughs> yeah, you see? <laughs> I'd love to be on the button, but I'm always there just before. Well, well you must have been on the button at some time. You know, you had all those hits and yeah, you were very, very so. cool and chic, weren't you? So. And, yeah. and what we saw there, that, that clip, that was actually from your own show, The Sandy Shaw Supplement. And at, at that time, not only was it not necessarily that common for a, a woman to have her own show, but it was more of a magazine-type show, which is fairly commonplace now, but it, it wasn't then. Yeah, I, I was trying to make um, a show that was like a, a concept album. Because mm -hmm. um, usually just people just stood up and sang and then they introduced the comedian and everything else. But yeah. I sort of got the subjects like love and sex or money mm -hmm. and uh, did a whole programme around and it. And were you allowed to discuss that on TV in those days? No, I just could sing about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. Looking back on those times nostalgically, like we've been talking about looking back on the 70s and, you know... Um, yes and no. I, 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 I felt that there was far less freedom in those mm. days than there is now, and I much prefer it now. No, I've oh, got... that's interesting you say that, though. Do you really think that? Oh, absolutely. In what yeah. way? What... Well, I was always on my own with loads of men around me. Oh, Sounds oh, hellish. Yeah. They, would never, they would never dream of having, like, a load of women on the show together. Oh, so yeah. it was, and to have a woman topping, they would, you know, topping a, a big show, they, it was, like, unheard of, and we had to really fight to get that. So were you one of the first, because I know Silly used to have her own show, Lulu yeah. had a show, were you one of the first women to do that? Hmm. Fantastic. And would, would you say now, I mean, obviously there's some amazing female artists now, like, like Duffy and Amy Winehouse or whatever, uh, would you say that they, they have an easier time of it now than, than no. you did then? Or is no, it just it, different? It, it's different, yeah, I think they have much more um, pressure than... I did. I had days off where I could go down King's Road and, yeah. uh -huh. and Chelsea and stuff. Yeah. So I had days off to frolic. But they didn't, and it didn't get reported like it does yeah. nowadays. That yeah, kind that of freedom. must have been awful. If I, everything that I'd ever done was on camera or on... Oh, God. <laughs> so when you first started, though, having said that, was it very difficult to get into the music business then, being a woman then? Yeah. So yeah, because all, yeah, because all the, it was uh, just blokes um, in bands, and that's all they were interested in. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't actually get a record contract when I first started. Mm. Um, and so um, Adam Faith, who discovered me, mm. decided to, that we'd uh, make our own records. Mm -hmm. He said, come on, girl, we can do this. Oh, and so, brilliant. great. So because of that, I've always been really independent. Mm. Right. Um, and I think I'm probably the only woman, the only one of the only artists from that time that actually owns all their own records. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, everybody so at that, at, yeah. well, I was going to say at that time, but most people generally have some sort of trademark, and yours was the bare feet. Um, <laughs> w w was that done in, in any sort of ironic way, or did you just have sore feet and didn't like wearing shoes? Some of that, some of that, but um, I've, I've got big feet. Well, big-ish. Oh, yeah. I remember you saying that sort of programme. I think yeah. it's a, a size eight or something. A there, size right? eight, but you know, I'm five foot nine. Yeah. I'm like barefoot. So yeah. it's kind of in proportion. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I could never get shoes to fit me. Okay. Also, I always used to fancy myself a bit of a hippie, hippie or a beatnik or something sure. like that. Then, you yeah. know? And it's, so, it's like a mindset. It's not mm. like freedom of. You know, wandering around with no oh, shoes on is, is kind of fun. I still, you know, well, it was I do a it all good the time. gimmick, though, wasn't it? I know yeah. I've got these great shoes for you today, though. These ones. Oh, wow. oh yeah. Yes. 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 See? So now you can walk in uh, shoes. I've had my feet done. I've I had you had done an when I was when you're 60. 60. When I was 60, I thought, I don't want a facelift, but I'd really like to get my feet sorted out. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> When they, were design when they were designing me, they kind of started up here and they went all the way down to my ankles and then they had a tea break. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm, all, I'm OK from the ankles up, but from the... You just didn't like the look of your feet. Oh, they're horrible. Oh, Do you know what me about <laughs> you? I always think of you, put it on a string Eurovision Song Contest, yeah. you know. And yeah. that, you know, I grew up... Um, I love 60s music and that to me was, you know, Sandy oh. Shaw, the epitome of Sandy Shaw. You hated the Eurovision, didn't you? Well, yeah, because I was cool, and it wasn't cool. It was kind of family entertainment. But I tell you what, whatever it was then, it's not as bad as it is now. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, isn't it naff? Yeah. I mean, 
That's the only thing you can say about band. it. Is, is that it? one of the reasons you decided to leave the music industry? Just, but you know, rather than carry on maybe doing something you weren't comfortable with? I got a bit with. bored. And also, as you get older, you discover more things about yourself. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I discovered I had a brain. Mm -hmm. you, you, yeah, you've well, done that one. That. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and are, are you now, because you went back to university, didn't you, and, and got yeah. your degree. What, what are you doing now? Um, I run uh, a clinic, the arts clinic. You've heard of that, surely. I haven't, sorry. Okay. Well, it's the arts clinic. I was going to pretend then I had both. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it for about 10 or 15 years now, where um, I run a bunch of psychotherapists and psychologists and for people all in the creative industries, not just the artists who are up front, yeah. but the people behind the scenes, because it's incredibly stressful. And I think we should look after ourselves. Mm. Mm. And to make sure that you get the best possible treatment rather than go to some quack up the road. And also someone who understands the industry that they're in, because a, a psychotherapist it's not, wouldn't it's not necessarily actually understand. necessary, because I can pass that on to um, the psychologists, like the other ones that work there, mm -hmm. to show them what the environments are and what the particular pressures are. But you have to be really good at your job. And yeah. you have to understand about things like boundaries, because artists are terrible. Yeah. They just go right over everybody's boundaries. Mm, yeah. And everybody gets caught in their glamour. And so unless you actually understand that, even the therapist can go a bit awry. Oh, and they do. Yeah. But are you actually going to perform again? Um, oh, you are then? Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that sounds like it. I just did... But, um, there's a couple of things that I'm interested in this year. Um, one is... I've just been in recording, recording studios with yeah. David Arnold. Oh, fabulous. And he's the guy that does all those Bond movies. Yes. And um, I did it so that um, it's for a, uh, a theme track, a theme, the theme music of a film called Made in Dagenham. <laughs> <laughs> Brackets, We Want Sex. <laughs> ah, okay. But it's nothing to do with that. It's to do with 1968 when um, the the Equality of Pay Act came through. It was about ah, the big, okay. you know, all the women got together in Fords yes. and mm -hmm. they said we should have equal pay. And it's a really funny, really sad. Um, I mean, I was just crying all the way through it with laughter and with sadness. Mm -hmm. And came out and they said, well, will you Brilliant. do the theme song? And I said, oh please. Yeah. So, Fantastic. Um, what was this? And the other thing about, nice about getting older is that when I went in the studio, people are reverent. Yeah, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, also, you're, nice. Is it, you're also going to be taking part in the Vintage Festival at Goodwood in August, is that right? Uh, I'm going to be a curator. OK. Oh. Which is a posh word, I think, for a yeah, producer. Yeah, kind of an organiser. Do you know, Sandy, we, I'm so sorry we've run out of time because I feel like we're just, we're just mm, getting just, warmed yes. up here. Please come on again. We'd, I we'd can come on again. again. In, probably in August, and I'll tell you more about yeah. that. Great. Yeah. It's Sandy Shaw, everyone. <laughs>